Hi there, thank you for joining me. In this video, we are going to have a look at distance time graphs. Slightly different to your normal graph. This probably isn't the most difficult topic we have to encounter, but we do need to understand exactly how they work and look at a few different types of questions that we might get asked. So let's take a look. <music> The purpose of a distance time graph is to tell the story of a journey. I do think these graphs look a little bit strange the first time you look at one, so we do need to understand how the graph is telling that story. And I'm going to do this by building a graph as we go through a journey. Let's have a look at the graph to start. Along the bottom we have the time, and it is the time as in a clock, not the number of hours that have passed, so 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and so on. Up the side we have the distance, this time it's in kilometres. Now what's different here is that the distance is not the total distance travelled. This distance up the side is the distance away from the beginning of the journey. This is what makes these graphs look a little strange. So the zero line at the bottom here is the beginning of the journey. As we travel up the graph, we are moving further away. But if we see the line of the graph coming back down, it means that we are traveling back to the beginning of the journey. Let's put an example together. So we're going to take a cycle ride. And we are going to start this ride at 8 o'clock in the morning. So at this point, at 8 o'clock, we are still at home. We haven't travelled anywhere, therefore we are at zero kilometres. The journey will therefore start right in the corner of the graph here. We start to cycle and by the time it has got to 10 o'clock, we have travelled 30 kilometres. So the first part of our graph shows exactly this. Along the bottom, we can see we have moved from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Up the side, we have travelled 30 kilometres. Now, at 10 o'clock, we've reached our destination and we don't move for a period of time. So let's say we stay there for an hour. So between 10 and 11 o'clock, our distance from home hasn't changed because we've not moved. Then we start our journey back home and we are back for 12 o'clock. So the line coming back down the graph is the return part of our journey. So that at 12 o'clock we are once again on the bottom axis. We are zero kilometers from home. Therefore our journey is complete. Now the graph is completed we can use it to extract information and it is the distance the speed and the time that are the three things that are shown in a graph like this. And in fact, when we talk about speed, we mean average speed. Let's look at an example. Just by looking at the outward journey here, we traveled for two hours. That is the time taken, two hours, and we traveled 30 kilometers. Now, what we use is the distance, speed, time triangle. If you're not familiar with this, it's worthwhile having a look at this just to make sure you know how it works. So, putting these figures in, our time is two hours and our distance is 30 kilometers. Now, we know from the triangle that our speed is our distance divided by time. So, that would be 30 divided by two. That means we have traveled at an average speed of 15 kilometers per hour. So the first line is showing exactly that. It is showing the speed of kilometers per hour. Let's do the same thing for the return journey. Now in this case, we have traveled the same distance. We were 30 kilometers from home. We have traveled all the way back down to zero. Therefore, the distance is exactly the same. But we did it between 11 and 12 o'clock. It was only one hour. So in this case, distance divided by time is 30 divided by one is 30 kilometers per hour. So this part of the graph is showing 30 kilometers per hour. 
and there's an interesting thing here you can see that the return line is considerably steeper than the outward journey and this is a general rule for a graph like this the larger the gradient in other words the steeper the line the faster the speed so we can see without even doing the calculations that the journey home was faster than the journey out. There are a number of variations on the types of question that they can ask using a graph like this. For instance, you might get asked how far we had traveled by half past nine in the morning. In this case, we use it almost like a conversion graph. We look along the bottom here and we see that 9.30 is here, halfway between nine and 10. We would from here look up the graph to the 9.30 point and then read across and in this case it looks like 22.5 kilometers in fact the question may be even simpler than that and you may be asked how long did you stay at your destination before returning home therefore you would just read off the 10 o'clock to the 11 o'clock mark and the time there is just one hour you may also be asked to complete a distance time graph having been given some information so let's have a look at an example as to how that might work so here we have a new distance time graph similar to the last one distance in kilometers up the side and the time in hours along the bottom let's stick with the cycle ride story questions are usually cycle rides walks or car trips so in this particular example we are starting our journey at 2 p.m already there is a situation where you might be asked questions about this part of the journey for instance if we look at the graph it shows that at three o'clock the line goes flat that means we've stopped moving effectively we're having a rest we could be asked how many minutes we are resting well the flat line goes from three o'clock to 330 therefore 30 minutes rest you could also be asked the speed of the first part of the journey or the second part here with the top slope and you would use the same method as we just have done on the previous example you could also be asked how far away from home are we at 5 p.m so looking at 5 p.m reading across we are 20 kilometers from home we now need to complete the journey so the first instruction we've been given is that we stop for 60 minutes once we've reached our destination so from 5 p.m for 60 minutes we are going to stay exactly where we are we are then told it takes one hour 45 minutes to get home so if we are setting off at six o'clock one hour 45 minutes would take us to 7 45 therefore our final job is to complete the graph with the arrival time 7.45 on the bottom axis. I want to finish with another example just to give you an idea as to how an examiner can make things slightly more difficult. Here we have another distance time graph. The distance in kilometers is up the side, the time along the bottom. The only difference is that the time is being marked out in minutes and indeed in 20 minute sections. The question here is to work out the average speed of the outgoing journey. So we're going to use our triangle again, and we know that speed is distance divided by time. So if we look at the outgoing journey, we start at the very bottom at the beginning of the graph here, and our destination is here at the 20 kilometer mark. So the distance is 20. The time it has taken, we need to measure off in minutes. We started at 10 o'clock. We got to our destination here at 10.40. So in minutes, the time is 40 minutes. Therefore, speed is distance divided by time. Therefore, if we take 20 and divide it by 40, we get 0 0.5. But we have to remember at this point that we have taken kilometers per minute. The distance is in kilometers, the time is in minutes, so we work out the speed, kilometers per minute. Therefore, if we want to work out the time in kilometers per hour, we have to take that 0 0.5 and multiply it by 60, 60 minutes in an hour. Therefore, we get 30 
kilometers per hour just one to be careful of a quick summary then a distance time graph describes a journey the distance is not the total distance traveled it is the distance from the starting point so if you are moving away from the starting point going up the graph you are getting further away if the slope is coming back down you are getting closer back to where you started as a general rule, the steeper the graph, the faster the speed. And don't forget, we use the distance speed time triangle in order to calculate that. And if there is a flat line, it means there is no movement for that period of time. So as you can see, the rules for a distance time graph are not quite the same as for a regular graph. But as long as you understand the mechanics of it, you'll be fine. If you have found this useful, please do subscribe to my channel and have a look at some of the other videos. I do try to bring out new material every week and I hope there's something there that might be of use to you. Thank you.